Welcome to our worship service. Before we sing songs for God, let me exhort you and let's declare this all together. In Psalms 95, 
verses 2 to 3 it says here let us come into his presence with thanksgiving let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise for the lord is a great god and a great king above all gods lord thank you god for this opportunity lord to feel you to experience you your goodness your faithfulness over our lives lord we worship you you are the king forevermore you reign the king forever you are a mighty shelter your love is like no other your strength beyond all measure you reign the king forever you are a mighty shelter your love is like no other your strength beyond all measure you reign the king forever you are a mighty shelter your love is like no I 
follow Oh, your face Cause you are My only one You are My only one I wanna live for you Be glorified forever My life will declare
All creation shouts and sings to the unshakable King, the unshakable King. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that is our declaration today, and even for the rest of our lives, that God, you are our unshakable King. This world will be shaken, things in our lives will be shaken, but God, you will remain unshakable. You will remain seated at your throne. You are and will always be king, and you will never abandon your post as king. You will never abandon us. As it is said in Psalm 29 verse 10, The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. Lord, marami mga bagay na hindi namin maintindihan ngayon. Marami kaming mga tanong. But God, in the midst of all the uncertainties that we are experiencing right now, we will continue to trust in you. Because God, the truth about you will remain. You are still good and you are still God. So right now, Lord, we just want to worship you. We just want to lift your name up. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Good afternoon, Church. Welcome to our online worship service. I'm Kim. I'm one of the campus missionaries in Victory. We hope na kahit na hindi po tayo nakikita kita ng personal ngayon, pero na-enjoy yun naman pong itong time na to na makinig ng Word of God kasama ng inyong family. And for this afternoon, meron lang po tayong dalawang announcements. First will be about our Thursday prayer and fasting. Alam po namin na sobrang na-enjoy niyo po yung nakaraang three weeks ng ating prayer and fasting at sobrang dami niyo na-receive na revelation from God. Kaya naman, we are extending our prayer and fasting up until next Thursday, April 9. Kaya naman po, next Thursday, punta po tayo ulit i-visit po natin ulit yung Victory Nova page natin at sabay-sabay po tayo na makinig ng ating prayer and worship online. And for our second announcement, it will be about missions update. In the midst of COVID-19, God's kingdom continues to advance in China, the Philippines, and the rest of the world. Katulad na lamang po ng ating church sa China, despite po na lahat ng mga nangyayari po doon, nakita pa rin po ng church natin doon na magandang opportunity po ito para po magbigay ng hope at ma-preach yung gospel po sa mga tao po doon. Doon po, makikita po natin na talagang God can turn things around for His glory. Dahil po dyan, let us continually pray for the church that we will be salt and light sa ating pong mga kanya-kanyang tahanan, sa ating pong community, and even for the rest of the world. At gusto rin po namin take time itong uh, pagkakataon na to para po magpasalamat po sa inyo. Maraming salamat po for continually partnering with us in being the gospel in the nations, even at this season. At para po makita po natin at mas ma-encourage tayo sa kung ano yung ginagawa ni God in the nation, specifically po sa China, let us watch this video. It's time for us to seek God for a spiritual response to this situation. We have not been holding the Sunday service prayer meeting, small groups, or staff meeting for the past about five weeks. So when the outbreak started, we rallied the people to join online and listen to the service. We asked people to seek the message from above, from God. So we provide a spiritual voice for them. We also have an online five-day prayer and fasting. So more than 300 people gathered together online for five evenings. So we're praying and planning how to bless Wuhan when the city reopens. We could imagine how traumatized many families are due to the thousands of Wuhan citizens who die of this coronavirus. So there's no better time to bring the message of the gospel in a life and death situation like this. We're thankful to our Evanation Global Spiritual Family who have been praying for us during this hardship. The advantage of every nation church is that we are a global spiritual family that had a solid foundation in our relationship. I feel we had the advantage that other churches don't have. They have the news. We have each other. God give us a song. So entitled, The Shepherd of the City. 
in the lyrics, there's a line, Lord, let me be your hands to do what you want to do on earth. Let me be your feet to walk the path that you have walked on earth. And we're gonna sing it when the city reopens, and hopefully, God can use us to touch the brokenhearted. And right now, for a time of giving, let me exhort you in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 5. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they, are, for they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Dito po sa verses sa binasa natin, gusto ko lang pong i-highlight kung ano po yung naging response ng Churches of Macedonia doon po sa pagkakataon or panahon na sila po ay dumadaan sa severe testing and extreme poverty. May kita po natin dito sa mga verses na to, yung naging response po nila doon sa situation nila is still generosity. At nandun pa rin po yung pagiging earnest nila in giving. Excited pa rin po sila to give. And even, nandun pa rin po yung nakikita nila yung giving as actually a favor or a privilege na binibigay po ni God sa kanila to be part of what God has been doing through Paul and his team. At ngayon po na nasa season tayo na tayo ay personally po ay dumadaan din ng crisis, I believe na ito rin po yung gusto ni Lord na maging response natin ngayon. Gusto niya pa rin po tayo na maging generous Gusto niya pa rin po na maging excited tayo to give at gusto niya pa rin na makita natin yung giving as a privilege na binibigay niya sa atin na maging part na kung ano man yung ginagawa niya sa mundo even at this season. At ito pong lahat ng ito ay possible lamang po through the grace of God. And I believe yung same grace na meron po yung churches of Macedonia during this time is the same grace that we have right now. Kaya... Wag po tayo na matakot na magbigay, na baka mawalan tayo because the grace of God is always sufficient for us. So with that, let us pray. Lord, thank you God for this time. Thank you Lord na uh, you never fail to provide for us. Salamat Lord sa mga nakaraang weeks God na nag-provide ka Lord para sa amin, hindi kami nagutom. At thank you God na despite Lord ng crisis na pinagdadaanan namin ngayon, Ginagamit mo pa rin po kami to be a blessing, God, to other people and even to this world. And God, right now, I just pray, Lord, for each and every one of us, Lord, natanggalin mo po sa amin yung fear, tanggapin mo po sa amin yung worries, God, but I pray na palitan mo po yun ng faith. And Lord, indeed, we trust in you, God. We anchor our faith to you. At salamat po because you won't just provide for us, Lord, just enough, but even you will provide for us abundantly. So Lord, bless our giving today. Thank you, God. May you be honored and glorified through our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At para po malaman natin how we can still honor God through our giving even at this season, let us watch this video. How do I give from home? Start by going to victory.org.ph slash give to choose a location. You can use online banking with BPI, Metro Bank, or Union Bank. If you use a different bank or if you have the cash on hand, you can opt for GCash. Another option is a direct deposit to one of our bank accounts. There are many ways to give from home. Choose the method that's best for you. For online banking, you'll be given a reference number and instructions for your specific bank. For GCash, register for a GCash account through the GCash app. Download it on your mobile via Google Play or the App Store. To give through GCash, just tap Pay QR and scan the QR code that appears on the giving page. Load up your GCash through a linked bank account or cash in at 7-Eleven and other authorized outlets. You can also give through credit card with Visa, MasterCard, and JCB. PayPal users can opt to give their tithes from our website. 
To make a direct bank deposit, you may deposit over the counter by visiting the branch nearest you. Or you can transfer your tithes via online or mobile banking. There are so many ways to give. You can choose. For more details, go to victory.org.ph slash give. In the midst of the changes we face around us, let us continue to anchor our faith in the God who never changes. We put our trust in Him, for He never fails. May the Lord continue to honor our faith in Him through our giving. sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our online worship service. Sa mga guests or visitors namin ngayon, maraming salamat po for watching with us. Sa mga Victory Nova members and volunteers, leaders, pang-apat na linggo na natin ginagawa ito. Sino sa inyo rito na may miss nyo nang pumunta ng Robinson's Nova para mag-worship service? Ako, na miss ko na. Miss ko na rin ang mga ministry teams natin. Ang mga ushers, music team, tech team, admin support, prayer team, kids church volunteers. Sa mga ministry volunteers ng 2.30 and 4 p.m. service, puso-puso naman dyan. Okay, pusuan nyo kung namimiss nyo na ang mag-serve. Don't worry, panandalian lamang to. Uh, darating din yung araw na magkikita-kita ulit tayo. But for this time, let's stay home and stay healthy. Sama-sama nating labanan ang COVID-19. Hope you are excited for the Word of God. I am. And we are taking a break on our Roman series, Gospel Explained. And as we enter Lenten season, we will be having a Holy Week series called A New Hope. And this will run for the next three weeks. Today is Palm Sunday, in which we commemorate the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. We observe this as a Roman Catholic nation. And we call it Linggo ng Palaspas. Traditionally, people would gather at the church with their palm branches to be blessed by a holy water and it is being used 
as a lucky charm or to drive away evil spirit at home. While we are on ECQ, the churchgoers were instructed to stay at home and follow the celebration on TV or online channels and the presider will just pray a prayer of blessing to the palms. To some provinces, the priest would drive a horse, do a procession, and at the end, in the church, there will be singing and palm branches would be blessed as well. Does Palm Sunday truly portray the triumphal entry? What is the significance of the triumphal entry of Jesus? And how should a believer of Jesus celebrate this important work of Christ? Let's answer all those questions by reading our text from Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 40. So if you are there, kindly read along with me. Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 40. It says here, And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, you shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus. And throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if this were silent, the very stones would cry out. Let us pray. Lord, we commit to you the preaching of your word. And may we acknowledge the need of a Savior and enthrone you as King of our lives. May we give you praise for all that you have done and worship for who you are. Holy Spirit, may we continually know our King and experience His peace in this tough and trying and challenging times. This is our prayer and declaration. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone will say, Amen. The triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem is found in the four Gospel accounts. Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11, Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11, John chapter 12 verses 12 to 19, and the text we have read, Luke chapter 19 verses 28 to 40. See, this triumphal entry of Jesus is significant to our faith. It is more than processions, singing, and palm branches or palaspas. From the scripture that we have read, there are three things that Jesus revealed on his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And let me share to you those three things. First, Jesus is the Messiah. If you will notice, Luke chapter 19 started with the story of a tax collector named Zacchaeus, who met Jesus, and his encounter with Jesus made him realize that he is a sinner. He immediately repented of his sins, and he receives not only forgiveness, but also salvation. And Jesus said a powerful, a strong statement to Zacchaeus, and he said, Today, Salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. And di naman kalay ni Abraham si Zacchaeus, paano siya magiging son of Abraham? You would want to understand when you believe in Christ, 
when you believe in God, then you are also Abraham's seed. Because Zacchaeus believed in God, believed in Jesus, he became a true son of Abraham. So tayo, kung nananampalataya tayo kay Jesus Christ, kung meron tayong paniniwala sa Diyos, then we are also a true son of Abraham. And this is the confirmation and the security that we have. Sabi ni Jesus, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. You see, He came to seek and save us. We are all lost people. Lost in a sense, we are living in our sins. We don't believe in Jesus. We are living in rebellion. We know God, but we keep on rejecting God. And we are all under God's wrath and judgment. But because of Jesus Christ, because of Him seeking us and saving us from God's wrath and punishment, then we receive our salvation. Because of that salvation, we found a Savior. And that is our Jesus Christ. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, people were shouting, Hosanna. Do you know what Hosanna means? Hosanna means, Lord, save us, or praise God and His Messiah, we are saved. People were recognizing that Jesus is the Messiah, the long-awaited Savior. Now, prior to this account, Jesus would tell His disciples not to tell others about who He is. But at this time, He is willing and ready, did not stop the people from recognizing who He is. He is the Messiah. He is a Savior. Acts chapter 5, verse 31 says, God exalted Him at His right hand as leader and Savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This was Peter's testimony recorded by Dr. Luke. You see, the triumphal entry is the time for Jesus to be recognized as the Messiah. So as we celebrate Holy Week, let's acknowledge that Jesus is our Savior, one who will save us from our sin and its punishment. If you don't believe in Jesus, and if you are living in sin, let me tell you, Jesus came to seek and save you. Receive Him as your Savior. Today, many people are dying because of COVID-19 or are afraid of dying because of this disease. Let me tell you, Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear Him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Are you afraid of COVID-19? Let me tell you, Jesus was saying, be more afraid of God who can kill both body and soul. COVID can kill your body but cannot kill your soul. At this time of crisis, at this time of uncertainty, at this time of challenges and difficulties, let's allow God to continually save us, not just our soul but also our body. Why? Because we have a Savior in our Jesus Christ. Second, Jesus is King. After the Zacchaeus story, Jesus told of a parable, verses 11 to 27, where he spoke of a noble man who went into a far country to receive his kingdom. He entrusted Minas to his servants, and while he's away, his servants are to engage in business in what he has given until he returns. And when he comes back, he will judge both the faithful and the unfaithful. So this parable talks about Jesus being that noble man who has claimed his kingship. This Jesus is king. His triumphal entry is a picture of his sovereignty. When he sends two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite of you, and you'll find a colt tied, untie it, bring it here, and if they question you, say, the Lord has a need of it. You see, that command shows His sovereignty. He is in total control of every detail in life and ministry. The owner, without any argument, allowed the two disciples to take the colt. Now you may ask, why colt? Bakit batang asno? Why not horse or stallion? Yun yung sasakyan ng mga hari. That's the ride of a king. Jesus deliberately chose a colt or a young donkey. Not a horse, nor a stallion, 
because a cult is a symbol of peace. He is not coming as a conqueror, warrior, king, but he comes as a man of peace. See, this king brings peace. This king, yes, would want to have a dominion, but he's bringing peace to his subject or to his domain. And the people recognize it, and they acknowledge that Jesus is king by spreading cloaks and throwing palm branches. Spreading clothing to carpet one's pathway was a way to honor a person. In the Old Testament, when the people are aware that Jehu has been anointed king of Israel, then in haste, every man of them took his garment and put it under him in the bare steps. And they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 13. Mark tells us, many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. John's Gospel indicates that the people were going out to meet the procession with palm branches. See, that triumphal entry is the time of Jesus to be recognized as King. Jesus is King. Jesus is our Master. Jesus is our Lord. Third and last point, Jesus is worthy of praise and worship. Jesus is worthy of praise and worship. Verse 37 says, As he was drawing near, already on the way down to Mount Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Jesus receives praise and worship as he enters Jerusalem. And the people were quoting from a portion of Psalm 118. It is ironic why? Because much of Jesus' ministry, he was despised and rejected. Often the adoring crowds who followed him only follow because of what they could get from him. And most of his audience rejected any kind of personal commitment to Jesus. It was all different on this day. On this day, they gave an extravagant worship, attention, and honor on Jesus. Using their clothes as a saddle, using their clothes as a carpet for the colt he rode on, considering the expense and value of clothing in that day, that was a generous praise. You see, praise is different from worship. Praise is thanking God for what He has done. It's being delightful. It's allowing you to, to go back and thank God for all the things that He has done in your life. While worship is something that you are giving to God because of who He is. Worship is giving worth and value for who He is. Praise can be given not just only to God, but to other people. But worship is exclusive to God alone. Did Jesus need it to receive such praise? Does Jesus have a self-esteem problem and needed affirmation? I believe it was not for His sake, but for our sake. Jesus needs to be praised because we need to praise Him. If we will not praise Him, God will still get His praise. The stones, the rocks, the seas, the mountains, the sun, moon, and stars, they will all praise God. If we will not praise Him, God will still get His praise. It is fitting and appropriate for us to praise Jesus, not just for what He did, but also for who He is. Many people at that time cannot praise Him because they don't believe, just like the Pharisees. Many as well don't know Him. And there are some who praise Jesus, saying, Hosanna, but after a few days, they are the ones shouting, Crucify Him, Crucify Him. If you believe in Jesus, we praise Him for His work. We praise Him for His work of salvation and His rule of peace in our lives. We worship Him for who He is. He is our Savior. He is our King. There is no other name and person above Him. He alone is worthy he alone deserves our worship. The triumphal entry of Jesus Christ reveals 
that Jesus is Messiah, Jesus is King, and Jesus is worthy of praise and worship. Jesus is our Savior and Lord, and He is worthy of our praise and worship. Let Holy Week be a reminder that we have a God who seek and save us from our sin, and that He promised salvation to those who believe and live for Him. Let no more sacrifice be done, for He has already sacrificed Himself for us on the cross. Our response is to praise and worship Him, not just for what He did, but also for who He is. So if you're listening and God was touching your heart, wanting you to receive Him as your Savior and Lord, don't miss this opportune time. God is using this message to talk to you and invite you to be in His presence. So if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I will lead you to prayer. Come, join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love and your sacrifice for us. And right now, I understand that I am a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of your mercy and grace. I acknowledge my sins before you. I have done so many things that doesn't please you. I have lived my life for myself only. And I am sorry and I would repent. I repent of all my sins. And I ask you to forgive me just like how you have forgiven Zacchaeus. I receive you as my Savior and Lord and I ask you to lead my life. I come to you now and I ask you to take control over my affairs, over my decisions, over my feelings, and everything about me. I am no longer my master. You are the new master of my life. You are my king, and I give it to you. And from this day forward, I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to follow Jesus, to love Jesus, to walk with Jesus, not just today, but for the rest of my life. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that sincerely, let me congratulate you, for that is your greatest decision that you have ever made in your life. Let me tell you, God will not only reveal more of Himself to you, but He will unveil great things in your life. But allow us as a church to help you grow in your faith and walk with God. Message ka lang dito, or i-PM mo lang kami sa Victory Nova. And we will be gladly to connect you to one of our Victory Group leaders so that this Victory Group leader will call you, will pray for you, will encourage you, and will help you walk with our God. Congratulations again. And to all the members, volunteers, leaders of Victory Nova, even to our guests, let me declare a prayer of blessing to all of you. Lord, we continually exalt you and magnify you over our situation, even in our nation. Thank you that you are in control. You know what is happening, Lord, and we put our in. We get our peace from you. We get our strength from you. We find our comfort and refuge from you. Lord, we run to you right now. Lord, and we ask for your mercy and grace to continually envelop us in these tough and trying times. Lord, as a church, we continually pray that you will heal the sick people, those who are infected by coronavirus. Lord, the PUI, the PUMs, Lord, make them negative. Lord, uh, those who are already sick, Lord God, because of this disease, we speak healing. We declare your miracle. We declare your grace to be upon them. Extraordinary strength, Lord God, be placed upon their lives. Lord, thank you that you will not allow this virus to continually spread. But Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we put it to stop. Lord, we ask that your mighty hand will put it to stop. Lord, thank you right now, Lord God, that you are healing our land. You are healing our nation. Lord, thank you that you have forgiven us of our sins. Thank you that you have saved us, Lord God, and you will continually save us. Lord, 
right now we ask for provisions for those people who don't have food to eat or God, no supplies at all or who are afraid of their future Lord, we cast all our fears to you Lord, if there's any fear in our lives I pray that you will replace it with faith I pray Lord God that you will replace it with peace Lord, peace which transcends all understanding to guard our heart in Christ Jesus Allow us, Lord God, to be walking in faith, not in fear. Lord, allow us to walk by faith, not by sight, not by circumstance, not by the bad news, Lord God, because we have the good news. Allow the good news, Lord God, to overrule the bad news in our lives. Lord, thank you that you will continually speak to us, encourage us every day of our lives, that your word will direct and guide us. As we open it, you will speak to us, you will direct us, Lord God, through your word, through the Bible. And Lord, even as we pray, your Holy Spirit will be inspiring us, encouraging us, leading us in every way. So Lord, right now, we will not give up in doing what is good. That is my prayer and declaration to all frontliners, God. That we will not give up in doing what is good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Give your people, your servants, Lord God, the spirit of not giving up so that we will see, Lord God, the fruit of our labor. Lord, whatever we have done by faith, we understand, Lord God, that you will reward it. We understand, Lord God, that you will not overlook, that you will not reject or neglect what we have done before you. And you will reward it, Lord God, and you will bless everything we are doing. So thank you for covering us with your blood. Thank you, Lord God, that those who are praying for protection, we will receive our protection. Those who are praying for provision, we will receive our provision. Those who are praying for a great future, we will have our great future. Because we have you on our side. We have you as our Lord, as our King, and as our Savior and Messiah. So thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone will say, Amen and Amen. Now let me encourage you. Continually pray for our people, for our nation, especially those who are frontliners, those who are sick, for our families, for our communities, for our cities. Every, every people in the whole world needs our prayers. Continually to be a light and salt. Continually donate, to give, to extend hand. And as we give, we do understand God will be the one who will return His blessings. So God bless you. See you again on our next online worship service. God bless. Sa gitna ng kaguluhan at tinig mo ay hana Sa Mong banal, may bago kang alam.